It's SDL. Russ is back. He didn't pass into the great beyond or anything like that. Today on Secure Digital Life, we are going to talk about something everyone has and everyone worries about, routers. And what happens when you set these up? How do they work? What kind of stuff is going on? So if you're interested in routers, and I bet you are because you have one at home, and if you weren't interested in routers, you probably wouldn't even watch this show in the first place, then stay tuned and we will check it out when we come back on Secure Digital Life. This is a Security Weekly production. Welcome to Secure Digital Life. And you type in AAA porn or whatever it is you're typing in. I'm, so, I'm sorry, we, I was at a PG show. And I'm really okay. excited to be here. I'm glad you're here because somebody needs to know what's going on. That's right. Okay, so now, now somebody has to drink this. <laughs> I think it's another day, it's another episode. Yeah, he's looking at the wrong camera. You, oh, oh, you moved my, you put my camera over here. Eh, there you cut. Go. Basically, forget you ever saw that. I, I think actually forgetting you ever saw that would really be a good <laughs> idea at this point. All right, we're back. Doug White here at Secure Digital Life with Russ Boschman on that other camera over Hello, there. Hello, I see you all. Yeah, there, there he is. I'm see, back from this, London and from my deathbed. Yeah, back from London and his deathbed, which didn't coincide, no. right? You, you no. went to like Stonehenge yeah, or something like that. Yeah, I went to Stonehenge and, and all yeah, that stuff. Got blessed by the Druids. I did. That's what it says on my selective service form, that I'm a druid. Really? Yeah, it oh. does. When I went to fill it out when I was 18 years old, I filled out the form. It said religion, and I was like, no, what's what this one mean? So I didn't I, know you were Druish. I am Druish, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like, it's, uh, that's good, though. Mm-hmm. So today we want to talk about what routers do. And routers are these ubiquitous things that everybody has at their house, at their business, in their car, maybe even. I, I don't think we have them in a car yet, but... This is a device that basically is used to connect things together. So what happens is is that networks, which are out there in the world, have to have some method to talk to each other. And the best way to think about routers is they're really like detailed maps of different areas. So they join all the detailed areas together so that when you go out in the world and you want to talk to, um, am I on the wrong camera? No, I'm on, okay. And so when we go out in the world, we're going to look at a map, and we have to have a way to find places we don't know anything about. And so routers basically act in an interest, but they also do other things. They start serving the purpose of being what are called firewalls because they can be smart enough. Even these little home ones. I mean, used to, you didn't have that. Routers cost $10,000, and you never saw that. But today, you can buy these home routers that actually have some built-in security. Mm -hmm. They have some manageable security on them. So most little home routers like this one that we're looking at here have a router. So that's going to connect between this thing you don't know anything about, which is outside. Mm-hmm. So you've got a some kind of gadget, uh, which is usually a modem, mm-hmm. that's connecting you to another modem somewhere else that might be at a communications or an ISP. We've talk, I've talked a lot about ISPs in the last couple of weeks. We're talking about net neutrality. And that's going to connect you up to that place. Yep. Then they also have a switch on board. And these are really two different things that the company just built together into one box to keep it simple. In most enterprise level stuff, so you go to a company, you're going to have a switch that's very separate from a router and they're connected together with cables. But in these, they've actually built into the back of this thing some little switch ports. Mm -hmm. And so the best way to think about the difference between these two things is that if you think about your GPS, Your GPS knows a lot about certain areas, but when you start crossing certain boundaries, you may have to actually load a different map. Mm -hmm. Like when I went to France, I had to load a whole different map. The router is acting between those different boundaries to exchange information. The switch is just handling the local. So it's like your city map. When you want to find out where where Chuck lives, you actually use that little city map to find the detail. But when you want to get between Providence, Rhode Island and Phoenix, Arizona, you go get a great big map that maybe you don't know very much about. You may not have a lot of details details, but you know that you can follow this path all the way down and get there. And, and so those are the kind of gadgets uh, that are constantly being used out in the world. If you need to set this up in your house, you've basically got a modem mm-hmm. that probably you either rented 
or you went and bought and your cable provider or whatever kind of service, if you've got fiber optics Fios, or all the yeah. kind of cool stuff that Google people Fios, have, yeah. is it Fios? Is that Fios, you say? yeah. I just know they won't bring it to my house. <laughs> that, 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 but but I, I was calling it Fios. And Fios. so I started calling it the wrong thing because they wouldn't bring it to my house. Oh, then that's fine. And yeah, that didn't help. But uh, you want to show you want to show sure. them some of the other components of this stuff? So so as Doug, as Doug was pointing out, uh, this device helps you connect all the devices in your home. So if you're somebody who has... Uh, uh, Xbox or PlayStation or even cell phones or refrigerators that connect to the to the internet. This is the device that um, you're going right. to connect through. Um, so this then becomes a a not only a single point of failure, right, for your entire home, but also something that you need to make sure is super secure because people can get in um, quite easily. So. To begin, let me just show you. You, you can typ typically people take this out of the box, they plug it in, and they're like, "Oh yeah, I'm ready to go," and they get internet, so they don't care uh, right. about the security side of things. But the the first and biggest problem with this device is the there's a default password on this on this device. Right. It's a default password, and companies like uh, all companies like Netgear and Linksys and and to some extent, you know, the Homebrew version of Cisco. Or D yeah, they all publish their passwords. Uh, they're sure. it's, so it's usually username admin or password and password password or vice, uh, you know other way. I around. like password password. Yeah, myself, password yeah. password's great. In fact, it says it right on the box there, right on yeah, the back. You can't so. see it, but it does. And so uh, the most important thing to do when you first set this up is to change that because anybody, as you know, as we know, anybody can can just log into it and 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 deal with it. So the, the good the good news is about home equipment, yep. which which is better than commercial equipment in some ways, is that Soho type equipment. Mm -hmm. often has some basic uh, security built yep. into it. Like, for instance, these types of routers that we're looking at right here, mm -hmm. they actually have, even though they have a default password, and the default password is set at the factory so that you could get back into it, they actually typically do not allow connections from the outside because yep. you're getting ready to stick this thing. You're going to plug a cable in here that touches the entire world. Mm -hmm. And so they often will block access inbound, inbound to that from there, but they don't necessarily block it on Wi-Fi. So if I if somebody comes and sits in front of your house in a van, they can actually yeah. get into your router through your Wi-Fi because they don't need a cable anymore. Yeah. They can just sit out there. And and you have people that actually do that. And the process pro, uh, the the thing is called war chalking, where people like yeah. it, based on World War One, where people um, would go up to houses and if the, if people gave them food, they would put a little chalk mark in front of their house on the ground so other people who needed food would yeah, go. It's the hobo code. Yeah, they do yeah. the same thing now with with well yeah. they did. I don't know if they still do, but in metropolitan areas they'll do Wi-Fi. I, I wanted uh, to do a show called War Sailing, where we were going to kayak through like Newport Harbor and see how many people had. Because I was yeah. seeing this at my house. Yep. I was kayaking, looking at my phone, and I was seeing all these Wi-Fi networks that yep. were on sailboats. Yep. I was like, how many sailboats could we hack in one day? That's awesome. So, so let's actually move to uh, you know the, the, the computer yeah. version of what of what we see. Um, so we're just going to cut to uh, my my computer screen and. And so what you have here is just a basic uh, web browser. I'm using Firefox. You can use whatever you want, Chrome or Firefox or Safari. Do not use Internet Explorer. Um, <laughs> well, Microsoft's removing support for that anyway uh, as they move They finally to, give up. Yeah, they give up. Uh, but so I'm using, I'm using uh, Firefox, and, and, and this is a Mac. So if I click up here to my Wi-Fi, I just look for my Wi-Fi uh, router, which I know is Netgear because uh, I, I, I installed it that way. Uh, that's the default name. And notice how there's no security uh, lock next to it, which means it's completely open. Very, very dangerous. Very right. bad. Very bad. Don't do. Don't do. Um, I'm here doing it for demonstration purposes. And notice how it's not plugged into the wide area. So there's no, yeah. there's no internet. So it's safe for now. For um, now. For now. Yeah. As soon as I stick that cable in, you know, all bets are off. But uh, so there's no security, again, just for demo. Um, and what we have uh, is we, we're, we're, we've got to the web page for the router. The router has its own web uh, server in it. Um, and you, we, can, we can configure the router by going to the web page. Now, what you need to do here on, on, is find out what your IP address is. Um, and just and I'll explain why in a minute. But uh, I'm just going into network here. And notice how my Wi-Fi, uh, uh, my, my address right now uh, is 192.168.1.2. And uh, that is a, um, a local address set by the DHCP server in the router. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my web, my web browser, and I'm going to type in 192.168.1.1. Uh, and 1.1 would be the gateway uh, mm -hmm. of the address of the router because my computer is 1.2. So hit that. And now we're going to get to the, 
to the uh, configura uh, configuration page for the router. Um, and here we go. Oh, no, we don't. Uh, let's try again. Probably because I already have it open here. So voila, this is what we've got. And now you'll see, uh, th this is kind of standard for this particular brand of router. I mean, you get different interfaces, different, different right. uh, tools and utilities, but we're gonna cover the most basic ones and, and ones that you'll want to look at. And the first thing I usually tell people uh, like my parents, for instance, who, you know, they're, they're a little bit older and, and they don't know much about security is you want to change the default password on this device. So um, we're going to come over here to, all right, and then so I'm just going to type in admin and password because that's what the, the, the uh, default is. And now we are in, okay? So we're going to go over to advanced, which I just clicked on, and then we're going to click on, um, I think it's under administration. Mm, it is not. It's probably under security. And it is not there either. Uh, how about setup? No. Advanced? It's you, here somewhere. You're going to change the password? Yeah, I want to change the password. So set password. Here we go. It's under administration in this case. So always look for the set password or, or change your password. So I'm going to click on that. And the old password is password. And the new password, uh, we'll just do one, two, three, four, five, six. And don't do that, but I just want to show you that that's, that's how you do it, okay? And then uh, you click apply, and then it will change the password on the router. Um, pick something complex, please, because again, this password, uh, if, you, if it's not complex, anybody can get into this router. I mean, any, anyone. And, and I will tell, I'll tell you a couple of tips uh, that, that we've always used. And, and some of these are not the greatest security, but, but security is always about uh, the risk. Mm -hmm. And your home is at risk, but it's not as much at risk as if you were, say, the FBI or the right. White House or right. something like that. So one thing you can do that, that we've done, if you, if you don't want to try to worry about it, you can actually write your password on a piece of tape and tape it on the bottom of your router. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a lot of traffic and it's in your house. Now, I mean, if it's in a public place or it's in your car or it's in your business, then yeah, I would not do, do that, that under yeah. any circumstances. Sometimes people have used serial numbers and mm -hmm. things like that off there. But be sure you can remember the password because if you lose it, yep. the only way you're going to get back in this thing is by completely going to a factory reset, which will put it yeah, with a toothpick. With a toothpick. I use dental picks because you can <laughs> buy them on the internet, and then people look at you funny when they go in your office, and there's yeah. like, you know, creepy <laughs> dental picks hanging there. I'm like, it's for routers! <laughs> uh, it's for Mac, you know, to, yeah. to, to pop those uh, SIM cards. But you'd have to reset it, and if you reset it, you're going to lose all the things that are set on it. And for most of you, that may not matter at all because you're not going to set very much, right. but then you have to reconfigure yeah, the whole thing from scratch. Exactly. So, um, so that that's you know that's that's important to remember. Uh, and then now once um, once you change the password, now we're free to go into other uh, other areas. And I want to cover some basic ones. And uh, Doug, I know we want to talk about uh, encryption. And so if we look at um, as I showed earlier, uh, this this wireless network, this Netgear, has no encryption right now. Right. There, there's no encryption configured on it. Um, and so we want to make sure that that's the, one of the set, first things that we change. For, first would be the password, next would be, would, would be encryption. And you can do it in the basic interface um, here by clicking on that. Um, and hopefully it's going, not going to be so slow. Uh, well, let me tell. While well, that's loading, let yeah. me tell you about encryption for yeah. a second. Great. So what what the encryption means is that the router, when it is encrypted, is all the packets that are going through the air. So this is all the stuff you're sending. And we've had other shows about that. We talked about VPNs, about using VPNs when you're using unprotected Wi-Fi. Same thing here at your house. If you are sending traffic from your desktop computer, from your refrigerator, from your TiVo, whatever it is you're doing, and you send that over radio frequency, which is what this is, mm -hmm. someone who's nearby can intercept that signal and they can see that traffic unencrypted. So this encryption that you want to use is going to actually make it such that the traffic between, even this, because you're going to use your mobile device, it's on Wi-Fi when you're at home. Well, if you're sending traffic, you're not using that, that digital cellular network that's encrypted from point to point. You're using your Wi-Fi, and that means somebody who's sniffing it, which is called air snorting, snarfing, snorting, yep. all kinds of terms, can actually do it. And there's all kinds of uh, tools yep. out there that you can download for free mm -hmm. to do just that. And so you want to be sure you put encryption on mm -hmm. your devices. And, and, and looking at the options that we have for this particular router, um, we have uh, for security options, we have the encryption type of WPA, WPA2, and then we've got uh, AES uh, encryption uh, and then TKIP. 
uh, and then we have the enterprise. Right. My recommendation would be um, just because uh, I use uh, a lot of IoT devices and they don't work with the enterprise, um, is to use WPA2 right now, um, and then whenever the next iteration or standards out. Yeah, I mean, I mean, my opinion is that the enterprise isn't that big of an add-on for home use for IoT stuff. WPA2 is the one you want to use. Yeah. So w pr usually people at home use personal mm -hmm. WPA. Enterprise requires some additional setup. It requires some additional things in your environment that you don't normally have and you don't want to deal with. Right. So typically what you do is, is use WPA2 personal. Mm -hmm. Do not use WEP. No. Well, I, I would say the only reason you would use WEP, mm -hmm. if you have really, really old stuff, yep. and I have seen that. So sometimes people have pre Service Pack 2 Windows XP machines, yeah. and I mean, that sounds ridiculous, yeah. but they do. Yep. And your parents or your friends or maybe you have w a really old Windows XP machine that you still use for your whatever you're doing, and you might have to use WEP if that's the case. But if you'll update that to Service Pack 2, then you won't have to do that, and you yeah. can use WPA2. WEP has been cracked. Yeah. Uh, that doesn't mean it's, it's broken automatically. Right. It's still encrypted. Somebody would still have to do it, but there's a mechanism to crack it at this point. Yeah, it makes and sense. And so WPA2 uh, AES is probably your best bet. Yeah, exactly. So, so now that when we click on WPA2 on the screen, you'll notice that we have uh, an option here to enter a pass phrase. Now, um, in, as we continue on uh, you know, progressing with technology, security issues become increasingly more prevalent. Um, and passwords were a thing. Now we're talking about passphrases. And, and look, it goes up to 63 characters. Right. And I'm not going to sit here and remember 63 characters worth. So p some people start using um, like you know lines from their favorite book or something like that. Something that's easy to remember, but somebody's not going to guess. They couldn't do a standard dictionary attack on it. So something that I, I can uh, uh, give you an example of. So let's say, say uh, I'll use the word. So Providence, which is our capital city. So I'm going to do capital P, then lowercase r, then zero, then V, one, D, three, N, and then at, and then E. So something like that would be something that people couldn't easily guess. Right. Um, and then once we, once we enable this passphrase here, um, and I'm going to click apply, I'm actually going to paste it up here because I'm going to forget what I did and I don't want to lose connection. So I'm going to click apply, okay? And now it's going to do its thing. And now what's going to happen is we're going to see under, uh, this is going to disappear. Um, and then it's going to come back and we should see it encrypted uh, with the lock. And, and there's two different things that are going on here. W one of the things that's going on is the encryption. And the encryption is wrapping all the traffic between your whatever and the router in your local environment. It's not encrypting it outside now, understand. It's just encrypting it between you and the antenna. Uh, the passphrase actually then limits the ability to access it. So you may go in an environment that doesn't use encryption, uh, that like Starbucks, where you desperately need to use a VPN, or you may actually have a device like at your home that doesn't have a passphrase restriction on it, or you may well have a passphrase, and you have to give that out to all your family members, put it in all your TiVos, put it in everything that's using Wi-Fi in your house. So that's the kind of thing that's going on uh, with, the, with the two different kinds of encryption that you see. And Russ is going to bring this up now and talk a little bit about SSIDs. Is that, is that our yep. next, uh, that's our next idea? Yep. Yeah. Do you want to just tell them what an SSID is while oh, I'm, sure. uh, this is still down? So, so the SSID is, is a name that is embedded in the, the Wi-Fi. So when Wi-Fi is talking to people out in the environment, they could see the SSID. So when you sit down with your phone and you see that there's a Wi-Fi that says Starbucks guest or it says uh, La Quinta Inn or whatever guest, that's the SSID that's being broadcast. Now here's a big piece of advice for you. Do not use your address or personal information as your SSID because it basically guides people right to you. And so we usually use just totally random things for SSIDs that we know what they are because it keeps people away. Some fun ones that I've used in the past, um, FBI surveillance van uh, <laughs> is one that I often use. DEA surveillance van. I used to have one that said DEA surveillance on Chuck because that was my neighbor and he was trying to grab my Wi-Fi. And I was like, I'm going to get you, man, and uh, stuff like that. But people will see those. Sometimes people put up joke ones. You'll yeah, see. Yeah. You'll Stop see. having sex upstairs. We hear you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I hate 
hate you upstairs. Yeah, I've right. seen, I, if you go to like New York and you've got lots and lots yep. of apartments and every one of them's got Wi Fi, you'll see all kinds of funny ones on right. there like, I hate you, Bill, or you stole my wife, or, or <laughs> something. I saw that one once. Uh, I used to sort of keep up with them. They're, they're quite amusing, actually. Do, do, we, have, do we have the yep, SSID uh, going? So Russ is going to set it up now on the router. Here's what we got here. Now, what you'll notice is our Netgear, right? Um, and that, by the way, is the SSID for this network, right. which we're going to look at a little later. And notice how now it's secure. Now, we have WPA2 encryption uh, using AES. Uh, and so that means that any communication within the vicinity of this router uh, is now encrypted. Right. So it's not unhackable, but it's a lot harder to hack. Um, and so I'm going to go now to where the SSID uh, options were. Uh, let me just go into advanced. And this is an old piece of tech, by the way. I think it's about four or five years old. Uh, so older piece of tech. Um, that's why it's, it's so slow. Um, if you look underneath it, you can tell if it's male or female. <laughs> um. Nice. Uh, and so if I go into uh, security, uh, excuse, no, I guess it's under admin. And then I go into, let me try advanced. So wireless settings, there we go. Uh, that's not it. Forgive me, I'm just... Uh, Actually, let me go back to basic. One other thing not to do on your on your SSID is to set it to, to the name of the device because yeah. if you do that, it automatically gives people yeah. a lot of information about the device. So that, that's another really good reason to yeah. change it. And, okay, and, so, and now now, you got it. so now we've got uh, the SSID here. Uh, so now there are two things I want to talk about: the actual SSID name uh, and uh, to broadcast or not to broadcast. That is yeah. the question. Uh, the name again, Doug did a, a great job talking about that. Um, so you can name it, you know, something that's not and. No personal information whatsoever, no address, nothing like that, as Doug said. So whatever you want to name it uh, is fine, and that's what will appear in public to, you know, like up here, uh, the rest of them. Uh, now, to broadcast or not to broadcast, what, is your, what are your thoughts on uh, broadcasting? Well, for me, security is always a trade-off between security and convenience. Mm -hmm. So if you don't broadcast the, the, the SSID, you're going to have to manually type that in to every device that you're using at home. So that means you go to your TiVo, you have to, you have to tell it what SSID, and there's not, that's not a difficult thing to do. So if I name my, my SSID FBI surveillance van, I just have to go to my TiVo and manually type that in. Right. If you broadcast it, then I'll see it automatically. So the, the security side of me says don't broadcast it at all. If you don't have a lot of traffic, meaning you don't have visitors, guests, and friends, and people coming over that you want to allow to use your, your Wi-Fi, then I'm, I'm pretty much in the camp of let's not broadcast yeah. it at all. Right. Uh, on the other hand, if, if you have uh, you know people that are constantly coming by as guests and friends and family or whatever, and they're using cell, they're going to be constantly asking you, what is the name of your Wi-Fi? And if it's Ask Clown or something <laughs> like that, and then your grandmother's yeah. there with her brand new iPhone, mm -hmm. and she goes, what is the SSID, dear? And you have to go, oh, it's uh, Ask Clown, Grandma. <laughs> uh, well, you know, you may, you may have a little bit of a problem with that. So it's really a trade-off. It's a personal decision. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're not really a target how much of a threat mm -hmm. it is, but any information you give up is a threat. Mm -hmm. So allowing people to see you at all is definitely something. Now, they can still find you, by the right. way, right. but it's a lot harder for yeah. somebody with a van driving through your neighborhood to spot your right. network if, if it's like that. Yep. And, and one of the last things I want to talk about uh, in this episode is um, separating out or segmenting out networks, your personal home network from a guest network. So okay. in this particular um, router here, we have the ability to set up a, a simple guest network, which takes traffic um, that... You don't want it separates out tra your traffic from traffic that you don't want other people to see. So, uh, a good use case would be at a bed and breakfast, for instance, mm -hmm. if you're running a bed and breakfast, or if you have visitors that come over and you want them to get onto your network, but you don't necessarily want to give them access to a, a segment of your network. Then you can simply click on the guest network here, uh, click on enable, uh, and then again the SID broadcast. And then what happens is the router creates a brand new separate network uh, from yours uh, and, and puts it uh, as guest, as a guest network, so that other people uh, can log into that guest network with a separate password, with separate encryption, um, and then neither, uh, neither, of the neither pieces of, of information or traffic uh, speak. So. And, and, I, and I don't have any problem with that in, in, as long as the idea is that it has, it has encryption and it has a password. Yep. Because if you set up a guest network and you allow it to just be defaulted, mm -hmm. You're, I mean, if you live way out in the country, somewhere fine. But if you live in any kind of populated environment, what happens is 
anyone sitting in your driveway. And remember, these networks, just look at yours at home sometime. Just grab your iPhone and walk around your property and look at how many networks you can see. All those people can also see you. And what will happen, sometimes even by accident, those people may start using your network. And they go, wow, this is faster than mine because I have this or I have a lousy piece of equipment. Mm -hmm. And the next thing you know, you've got a neighbor who maybe completely unintentionally is actually jumping through your network because they just clicked on the strongest feed they have no idea what they're doing, or they could actually be doing something nefarious. Mm -hmm. There was a really big case in New York where a man was bridging onto his neighbor's Wi-Fi, downloading child pornography, and when the police came to arrest someone, they tracked the signal right to the other person's house. Yep. So if somebody is doing that, whether it's intentionally or by accident, they could be jumping. So be sure you've got those networks blocked so that no one can just use them as strays, even if you're running a bed and breakfast or anything else. Now, Starbucks doesn't do that. No. But uh, that's because they're commercial, and they made that decision and decided to accept that risk. Yep. So... Go, yeah, go ahead. And, and also, you know, how do you know? Like, how, how can you check to see what's going on on the router to see if somebody's hopping on or piggybacking off your connection? Yep. And as you'll see on the, on the screen here on the computer, uh, this particular router has a section called uh, Attached Devices. And um, if it, um, on the attached device, you can see, uh, you know, the device names, the MAC address, which the MAC address is how the uh, right. people get tracked because it's the social security number of your of your uh, computer, if you will, um, or at least the, the network card. So, so it is a good idea to learn to connect to your yeah. router yep. and figure out how to get into it. So you can actually see attached device. It's always good to do this every now and then. It's what is attached? What's been attached? Yep. A lot of these have logging, mm -hmm. and you can actually see what's going on, and, and you can see. Now, don't panic. You have to be calm and look at all the things because you may have so many things in your home that are connecting to these networks like TiVos and things that don't necessarily have nice clean names that say TiVo. But so I, what we can do, I think, is uh, maybe we'll do another show where yeah, we can talk about week. more security mm -hmm. on the routers. So if you if you like this, if this is stuff you're interested in, you should be sure and post uh, comments and, yeah. and say, give us more or maybe say, hey, please, Doug, go away or lose some weight or something. Yeah. Um, but so we were talking about routers today. Uh, hopefully we will be back, and Russ won't connect any other uh, fatal illnesses no, or I anything like that. Fine. He's going to come back next time, and we can talk about some more routing issues, port forwarding, yep. firewalling, mm -hmm. all kinds of Mac fun things. Yeah. Mac filtering. How to actually set this stuff up to be a little more effective. Thanks for watching SDL. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.